always use clean sample containers and equipment. Store sample bottles and sampling supplies so they stay clean and dry. Ideally, oil samples should be taken in a manner that is easily repeatable and effectively represents the actual condition of the oil in the equipment. Oil samples must be taken on a regular maintenance schedule. Sampling must be performed in a consistent location and manner. Good sampling procedures ensure consistency and reliability of data. When obtaining a sample from a lubricating system, always have the oil warm and thoroughly mixed before sampling. If equipment has been idle, cycle functions so that the fluid is agitated throughout the system. When sampling mobile equipment, once the system has reached operating temperature, set the engine to a slow idle. Sample stationary equipment during normal operating conditions in return lines or downstream of pumps, cylinders, bearings, and gearboxes, and upstream from the filter. Do not take samples right after a filter change, on the outlet side of a filter, or after makeup oil has been added. Freshly filtered oil removes valuable information. Adding new oil dilutes the levels of contaminants and wear metals found, which may result in conditions appearing better than they actually are. Do not reuse sample probes. Fill out the sample information form completely and submit the form and sample to the designated regional lab for testing as soon as possible. This will ensure timely and relevant information. The inline valve method is perhaps the most desirable method to obtain a sample. This method provides the lowest opportunity for contaminant entry due to sampling activity that would throw off your results. Equipment is commonly fitted with oil sampling valves from the factory. If installing an aftermarket inline sampling valve, they should be installed upstream of any filter in order to capture wear particles and preferably on return lines. Locate the sample valve on the unit and clean the area around the valve prior to removing the dust cap. This will reduce additional sample contamination. Once the area has been cleaned, remove the dust cap from the valve. Note, shop rags can generate and deposit fiber and lint. Ensure that the sample bottle is clean and free of any moisture before obtaining the sample. Purge oil from the system to ensure a representative sample is collected in a test collection bottle. The appropriate amount of waste oil is determined by the distance of the sampling valve from the flow of the system. It is recommended one full sample bottle, equal to 100 milliliters, is purged from a remotely mounted valve prior to collecting the sample. Properly dispose of collected waste fluid. To take the sample, press and hold the sample probe to the valve to release oil from the system into the sample bottle. Fill the oil sample bottle approximately 80% to 90% full. Leave some airspace between the top of the fluid and the top of the bottle. Once a representative sample has been obtained, remove the probe tube from the sampling port and immediately seal the lid to the container. When properly performed, the oil sample will be warm, indicating that a representative sample has been obtained and all stagnant fluid was removed during the purge process. Fill out the sample information form completely and submit the form and sample to the designated regional lab for testing. Another method is pulling a sample from a reservoir or sump using the vacuum pump with tubing. Obtaining a sample from the reservoir is recommended only if an inline sample is unobtainable. The fluid to be sampled should be warm and circulated for 30 minutes in order to obtain a representative sample. Fluid in equipment that has not been operating and is cold allows information such as wear metals and contaminants to settle out in the reservoir. It is important that vacuum pumps are used with appropriate tubing. Make sure that new tubing is used for each sample in order to avoid cross-contamination. Using the same length of tubing each time you sample a particular reservoir helps ensure a consistent sampling depth within the reservoir. Aim for one-third to two-thirds from the surface of the fluid. Insert the tubing through the head of the vacuum pump and tighten the retaining nut. The tubing should extend about one-eighth of an inch beyond the base of the vacuum pump head. Clean the area before opening the reservoir access. Sample from the inlet side of the reservoir if possible and always sample from the same fluid level. Pump the vacuum pump handle to create a vacuum. Hold the pump upright to avoid oil from contaminating the pump. Fill the oil sample bottle approximately 80 to 90% full. Leave some air space between the top of the fluid and the top of the bottle. Obtain samples during normal equipment operation or within 30 minutes after equipment is shut down. The sooner the better. Again, consistent practices are important. 
When sampling from a reservoir, make sure that the sample is not obtained from the bottom of the oil compartment where contaminants accumulate and avoid scraping the tubing along the sides of the tank or reservoir. Note, if oil enters the pump, disassemble and clean it before taking the sample. Do not reuse tubing. Remove the bottle from the vacuum pump and secure the cap on the bottle. Fill out the sample information form completely and submit the form and sample to the designated regional lab for testing. If the equipment has been sampled before, it is only necessary to provide the equipment identification as it has been identified in the past, or use the Laboratory Unique Identification Number, UIN, age on the lubricant and equipment sampled, date the sample was taken, filter change, and any relevant notes, such as maintenance or specific concerns. If there is a different fluid product being used than in the past, this needs to be indicated also. If the equipment has not been sampled in the past, complete all equipment information such as description, make and model, and location. Ensure the sample is tightly sealed and there is enough sample to do all testing, but do not overfill the sample bottle. Samples should be sent to the testing laboratory as soon as possible using a reliable delivery method. Establish procedures for reliably sending samples to the testing laboratory. Things to avoid when taking a sample. Avoid non-representative sampling points. Never sample directly from a filter. Avoid taking samples after changing or adding fresh oil. Do not delay submitting samples after they have been taken. Avoid cross-contamination when sampling multiple pieces of equipment. Ensure samples are properly sealed and packaged for shipment. Ensure the exterior of the sample bottle, barcode labeling, or paperwork are clean when shipped to the laboratory for testing.